Welcome to this lecture. Here we are going to discuss about dynamic URLs in Django. In the previous lecture, we already have started working with views and URLs. Now let's have a look what are the different types of URLs. So there are two types of URLs. One is static and the other one is dynamic. So when we talk about static URL, which is also called as the fixed URL, this always remains the same and doesn't change. So any content that is associated with the static URL is always fixed and will never depend upon the user input. So let's have a look at the example. So this is a perfect example of a static URL where if you want to go to the products page of any e-commerce website, so you will be able to see a segment, a part of the URL says products. So it means that if this path if you go to this path slash products it will show you all the products of that web page so that is irrespective of any input that you are providing you are simply going to this url now let's talk about the dynamic url so a dynamic url is generated based on specific parameters or user input so the content which is associated with a dynamic URL can change. It can change dynamically. So let's have a look at the example. You can see that the path is the same, but there is uh, some other segment after the products. So this is actually the ID. So it means that if the user is clicking on a specific product, the user will be taken to another page where that specific product resides. So we will be implementing simple example just like this. So let's get started. We are now back to our project. So let's run the server first of all. So let's keep it running. So yes, it's working. Right. Now let's say we want to consider an example that the user logs into a specific website and the user sees a message. A welcome user or hello user welcome to our website so something like this we are going to print so here we are going to create one function let's say it's a greet function that the user is being greeted whenever the user goes to that specific page so we are going to pass the mandatory request parameter and we will return an HTTP response where we are going to use f string and uh, f string is already covered in the previous lecture where we can manage the parameters and variables within the string so we need hello and now we need the user we need a dynamic value here we are not going to print a static value for this we need to consider one parameter so the second parameter to be passed here will be let's say the name and the same parameter will be used here inside the curly brackets so i write hello username and welcome to our website welcome to our website so this is what we want when the user goes to that specific page right so our function is ready now let's check out the url as well we are going to write on the path and specify greet and the function that we want to use is greet right so let's run the server and let's follow this link so you can see that what we are able to see right now that it's it's not showing us anything it's because it's simply localhost 8000 we have to go to greet we need to write localhost 8000 slash greet so still it's not printing anything because we are missing something here and that is the parameter. We are not specifying the parameter after the greet. So we need to write here, let's say I'm writing here, RAM. But it's still not printing. It's because we haven't specified inside the URLs, we have not specified the parameter here. So we need to write it as a string because we want the user to write a string. The name can be a string only. And put colon and write down the name of that specific parameter. 
So this particular part will capture the name of the user and will get printed on the web page. So let's go back and let's reload and you can see we are able to have a message. Hello Ram, welcome to our website. So let's get back and check out what exactly we have done here. So inside the path, you can see we have a fixed part of this URL. And the second part involves the dynamic. This is the dynamic part of this URL. So which expects some string from the user. This is also called as this, this particular part. This dynamic part is also called as the path converter. And same parameter needs to be defined as a second parameter in your function in the views file. And similarly, it can be used inside the HTTP response. In the same way, you can specify integer values also. Now, let's consider another example where the user goes to a restaurant website and the user might want to find a particular menu item. If you remember, we already have done one example where the user was able to uh, was able to have a complete list of the menu items. So right now we are going to modify this a little. Let's say the user wants a specific menu item only. So we are going to copy this function and we are going to change the name of this function let's say to menu items one so we have changed this function to the name of this function to menu items one so we are already having the menu items list in the form of a dictionary with the name items let's consider one parameter it's dish now we are going to create one variable where we are going to assign items of dish now what is the purpose of this this description variable is assigned the value corresponding to the provided dish parameter from the items dictionary right now what after this we need to print return http response and let's say we are having the f string and we need a heading h2 and h2 so let's access this dish parameter the user whenever the user is finding that specific dish on the website user must be able to see the name of the dish in the second heading that is uh, that is using the h2 and plus its description as well so we are done with our function let's go back to our urls and specify the path so we are already having the path here that is dishes i'll create one more path with let's say i'm using dishes one this time in order to avoid any contradiction and i'll be using views dot the name is menu items one right now here we need to specify that dish so what is the parameter that we are providing that's dish we need to write here str and dish so let's check out if there is any problem all right let's run the server once again okay so there's an error right now the error is in line number 33 inside inside the views file let's check line number 33 all right so there is an indentation problem here and here let's check again right so there's no issue right now let's follow this link and we need to go to let's say i'll write here dishes slash dishes i need to write one so it will not uh, show us anything so here we need to specify the dish name so we are already having pizza in our list you can see that it's printing pizza similarly if i print here burger it will print burger but at the same time let's say if i'm specifying something which is not 
already mentioned in our dictionary it will say that key error so we need to resolve this as well so let's check out how to do this in order to resolve this issue let's first of all copy and paste the same function once again and i'll change the name of this function to menu items 2 and also let's go back to the urls and copy this path and change this to dishes 2 right so this much we have done and change the name of the function as well views dot menu items 2 perfect now here in this what do we have to do we need to check that if the item the specific item is available there in the dictionary that is in the list of items so here you can specify condition that if the dish is there in the items you need to write if dish in items if dish in items colon and we need an indentation description equals to items so if the dish is available then only this statement will be performed and another indentation so if the dish is available then the description will be printed or else we can have a simple else part we can write return the http okay i'll just copy from here i'll copy this from here and specify and instead of writing this description we need a string let's say not found in the on the menu not found on the menu let's check if this works yes this works and let's now follow the link so we need to specify dishes two and we already have burger inside yes it is printing but if i write something like let's say cake now it says that cake not found in the menu so hope this example is clear so in this lecture we have considered two very good examples one is regarding the how to print a customized message for the user and we also considered one restaurant website example where the user is supposed to find out a particular item from the dictionary of items right but one thing we haven't yet discussed and that is inside the url we have been just providing the string inside the path converter the point is what if we write integer value within the parameter inside the parameter when we go to the url in the browser so right now let's consider this path once again let's check what it is going to print if i specify any integer value we will write greet and if i write any string let's say rajesh we already know that this is going to work but what if i provide any integer value let's say 56 it is still printing the same value because django is flexible and can convert your integer values also to string now let's check out the reverse if we specify here int is it now again going to behave the same way if we specify int we already know that this is going to definitely print 56 now what if we provide any string value so this is not the same case with this so if you are providing an int inside the path converter it's not going to consider your string value string parameter in the url when you are going to that path in the browser this is all for now in the next lecture, we are going to discuss more about dynamic URLs.